Macrophotography at daytime is boring. In today's video, I'm going to tell you why. Before I start, let's have a look on the gear I used in this video. I got my macro lens, a flash diffuser, a flash booster, and we need as much additional light as possible. Let's go. Two weeks ago, I was in Madagascar. I went every night into the rainforest because I wanted to see as much animals as possible. And I was pretty successful. At daytime, most of the animals hide because they're scared of predators. But at night, they're coming out and actually they're sitting everywhere. When you got a good flashlight, it's very difficult to not see them. When you use some kind of flash diffuser as I did, it really helps make the color pop. Look at the golden pattern. Oh, uh, I just missed the focus. Next, that's just an example how important your flash is, because this is the quality you get without the flash at ISO 12000. It did rain all day long, but at night it was dry. All the frogs came out and I was able to get a couple of good images. But this was pretty challenging, because I had to hold the camera with one hand, and with the other hand I had my flash and my diffuse light. I tried to add some light so that the out of focus would work, or of course it's also very important to have some light to see where the focus point is when you shoot in manual mode. This spider is a very special spider. Well, it got a very special web. And the reason is not that it is purple. This is the net throwing spider. It uses its web basically as a lasso. And this is made out of sticky silk. Have you seen something like this before? Pretty cool. And this spider is also called the ogre spider. I think I don't have to explain why. A fun fact, those eyes have an aperture number of 0.58. This means those eyes are pretty damn good, especially at night. This allows them to capture 1500 times more light than the human eye. And what about those colors? Why is one blue and one red? 10 second break. There was one thing which was pretty strange, because suddenly I recognized those red small animals on the trees. Crabs in the trees? I had not seen a single crab on that day, and at night there were billions in the trees. And then they started eating some kind of juice from the trees. Didn't know that. Let's take a look at some macros I took. But to be honest, that was not the highlight of that night. Since I was not able to find a chameleon or a praying mantis at day, I was really excited if I were able to find one of these animals at night. Oh, and I got one more really cool close-up shot from the beach. Pretty similar to an insect eye, right? And then I discovered this small white strand. Can you guess what kind of insect that is? Okay, now it's easy. I finally found my first praying mantis I've ever discovered in my life. That was pretty special for me. I'm not sure if you can see it, but the length of this praying mantis is only one centimeter. So it's incredibly difficult to get a good image. The praying mantis was moving around, there was a little bit of wind, and I would shoot just with one hand and the other hand was holding the light, so it was so bad. But hey, I'm looking for those animals for years, and finally I discovered one. Pretty nice experience. 20 minutes and 50 images later, I gave up and thought, hey, maybe I find a bigger one which is easier to photograph. So I went on and there was still a chameleon on my list. 10 second break. Yeah, it was pretty a special night because I discovered the first praying mantis ever in my life and the first white living chameleon. Look at this chameleon, it is sleeping on a branch. I will show you some more pictures. This is so incredible. What the hell is going on with this chameleon? I, I mean, why? How? Why did it go there? Look at this small branch. Does it want to go back? And if yes, how? I mean, at daytime they are 100% invisible. It's almost impossible to find them. And at night they're sitting just at the end of a branch, waiting for the photographer to take 10,000 of images? I mean, that's pretty cool, but what? Oh, there's one thing I didn't tell you. That chameleon was like two and a half meters above me. So it was not that easy to take an image. I show you. That was probably the only situation I've ever used out of focus in macro photography. But it worked pretty good. I took like five or six images 
said uh, sorry for waking you up and it was fine. Just perfect. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you like this kind of content, I would really appreciate if you leave a like or a comment. I will answer every comment and there's one announcement I have to make because I'm planning on a German YouTube channel. So if you're from Germany and you don't want to uh, listen to this kind of English anymore, I will put a link into the description for German macro and wildlife photography videos. Yeah, have a good day and see you next week.